All right, welcome everyone to the publication editors panel discussion um, as part of Pub Crawl 2024, Pub Crawl number one. I'm Scott Lamb, the VP of content here at Medium, and I'm thrilled that you could join us today. I think we've got some people coming in from Tony's keynote discussion. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Really exciting panel that we have this morning. I'm going to just introduce our moderator, my colleague, Ariel Meadow-Stallings. Ariel is a product manager here at Medium and oversees, among other things, the Boost Nomination Pilot Program, which you are most likely very familiar with. Um, but in addition to that, Ariel is an editor. She has spent over 25 years in the deep in the trenches of blogging and publishing. Um, so she brings a wealth of experience to her role and she's really the perfect person not only to be overseeing the projects that she's working on at Medium, but also specifically for this panel. So thrilled to have you joining us. We have a great panel ahead of us. Um, and with that, Ariel, I will pass the mic over to you um, to start introducing our uh, panelists. Great. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, you guys, it's a real treat to be here with you today. As Scott mentioned, um, part of what informs my work here at Medium is that I have been a publication uh, editor myself for decades. Um, so the folks that I work with uh, in the Boost nomination pilot and just in my time around Medium, um, I, really I really have deep sympathy and compassion for all the challenges and excitement that comes with editing a publication. So with that in mind, I wanna introduce our panelists today. Um, let's start with, we've got Eric Pierce from Fanfare. Um, we have got Gabby Robet, who's the editor of The Unexpected Autistic Life. Um, um, we've got um, Sean Roberts, who edits uh, Coping with Capitalism, and Kiki Walter, who's the editor of two publications, The Age of Empathy mm -hmm. and The Memoirist. So um, everyone, just thank you all so much for being part of this conversation today. Um, it's really a treat. I, I have worked with each of you individually, and... Um, I'm really excited to just dive into talking about how you run your publications and what writers need to know uh, in terms of working with, <clears throat> with publication editors in general. So um, let's just start with a super, super quick, like one sentence about your publication, just so folks get an idea, um, just very briefly, uh, the topics that you cover. So Eric, let's start with you, your topics. Can you hear me now? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, pop culture mostly. So movies, uh, TV, video games, basically a lot of nerdy stuff, essentially. Great. Great. And then um, let's see, who should we do next? Gabby, uh, I mean, your title sort of speaks for itself, but you yeah. want to tell us a little about what you write about or publish and edit on, on your blog? Yes, we are the unexpected autistic life, and it is indeed very self-explanatory. Uh, we write about autistic people and their the challenges they they face. Great, and then um, Sean, would you like to tell us a bit? Yeah, so coping with capitalism is also pretty clear in the name. We're really just focused on providing clear paths uh, for selves and the collective. Um, to cope with oppressive uh, behaviors in capitalism. Ah, thank you. And then Kiki, do you want to tell us a bit? And I have to deal with a dog who's losing his mind at a vacuum cleaner. So tell us, tell us about your two publications. I'll be back in ten seconds. Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, great. I um, I, um sorry, there is terrible, sorry, feedback. There is terrible feedback. feedback. I run the memoirist and the Age of Empathy and Black Bear, which is a mental health publication. Age of Empathy's personal essays and the memoirs. Memoirs. Memoirs is memoirs is We're getting a, a significant echo with your Kiki. So um, I'm wondering if maybe you can try while we start the conversation, if you could try finding some headphones, perhaps that might help. Yeah, give it a shot. Um, all right, now that we've got headphones and a small dog barking at a robotic vacuum cleaner. 
taken care of. Um, let's dive in. So uh, I would love to hear from each of you uh, how, how you go about finding writers for your publications. Um, do they find you? Uh, do you reach out to folks? Uh, how do you find the people that you want to work with in your publications? Maybe um, let's start with uh, Gabby. Do you want to let us know how do you find the writers that you work with? Well, most of the time they <clears throat> sorry they come to me because we have submission guidelines. So they read something in our publication, they like it, they look at the submission guidelines, and that's it. Occasionally, and because I'm always reading on Medium, I find someone who wrote about the topic and I leave a private note, hey, would you like to join? But most of the time they come to us, yes. Nice, so you are mostly folks finding you mm -hmm. um, and then Indeed. working with the people, the people that, that reach out to you. Yes. Eric, what about you? How do you... How do you navigate finding or dealing with new writers? How do you do that intake? Um, yeah, similar to Gabby, I, I think the advantage of having a long running publication is people, they know you, they find you. And so like 90% of the new writers are people that find fanfare, they know of fanfare and they submit to us through our guidelines. I think when you're a newer publication, uh, you need to do more active headhunting and take a more active role. And we still do that to some degree, but it's mostly people coming to us through our guidelines. Yeah, and this this is actually a great um, segue because I know, Sean, I think you are running the newest publication um, of this panel. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit how long have you been running your publication? And as someone who's still uh, in the process of kind of ramping up a newer publication, how do you how do you find new writers? How do they find you? Yeah, for sure. This has been just about a year of this publication, so it's definitely still new. Um, but I typically have uh, used the topic searches on Medium to find writers writing about specific topics. I'll, leave private replies and say, hey, if you're interested, I have this publication that you might enjoy writing for. Um, I've also found a lot of writers coming to me via the um, publication guidelines. And then I think a unique thing too about being a part of uh, the Boost program is that I can submit a story for Boost and also say, hey, if you would like a space to also submit similar stories, this publication is one that you can utilize. Yeah, I love that. And just for anyone who's not familiar with the Boost nomination pilot program, it's the experimental beta program that I run where we work with publication editors who nominate stories for Boost consideration. Um, and then our inter internal curation team reviews those stories and decides um, if they are a good fit for Boost. And if they are, then they are boosted. That story is boosted um, broadly across medium um, and boosted stories generally get 500 additional views. 95% uh, of boosted stories get 500 additional views within two weeks. So um, boosting is a really exciting opportunity for writers. And um, part of the Boost nomination pilot program is really working closely with publication editors to help us find those stories for Boost. So um, there's lots of information about it on the Medium blog. If you have any questions, just if anyone's not familiar with that program. So Kiki, I want to check in with you on this question. I also want to see how those headphones are working. Um, with your publications, how do you find new writers? And um, and how do you how do how did did they find you? Do you reach out to them? How's that work for you? Now we can't hear you at all. <laughs> While Kiki's getting audio set up, um, I want to, Sean, something I loved hearing about from you was the way that you're using the topic pages and that that's a really valuable tool for writers to potentially use um, to, yeah. to reach the publication editors who may be relevant to their topics. Um, it's so it's good for writers to know that that is a tool available to them is using their explore tabs. Okay, Kiki, you want to try again?
Now you're muted. Maybe I should try leaving and coming back. No, no we, we got, got you. you. We got you. Okay. You're, you're good. All right. What's the question? The question is, how do you find new writers or do they find you? Okay. Um, I get an endless stream of writer requests every day. <laughs> it's, it's, we have a very large publication. Um, our, our two main ones, Age of Empathy and the, Me and the Memoirist, we constantly get requests. So I don't really need to go out and do any marketing. Um, for that, Black Bear a little bit, we've gone out and, you know, I've put up, um, I don't know, social media posts that say, we're looking for writers, come and join us, you know, something slick. But for the most part, writers find us. Um, I think maybe I can do a little more outreach for those who don't know that the memoirist exists. Um, but we have a lot on our plate. And uh, it's exciting bringing in new writers and seeing how well they respond and how excited they are. Um, so usually every weekend I sit down and add them to the publication and we're off. That's great. That's great. So I, I would love to know, and let's kind of work our way back. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about each of your editing processes. Do you do a lot of handholding and workshopping? with your writers or are you more hands-off in your style so let's let's start with you kiki it depends we have a a big group of editors that work amongst all three of the publications we have some of our editors are very hands-on and will do a very thorough editing job others like me, I'm more of a light editor, but I'll go through, fix any typos. If there's a content suggestion, I'll make it. But, you know, I, I like to honor the writer and their creativity as much as I can. So it really depends on the editor. And I'm open to our editors having different styles. It really works, especially with the boosting program. Yep. A lot of our editors like to work with writers to improve what they're doing, give them a better chance of getting boosted. So that's really great. It's really important to have a strong team, I think, if you want to grow beyond a certain number of followers. Writers. Yeah. 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 And I really appreciate what you're saying that part of the value that publications can offer to writers is that really personalized um, editing and guidance. And the reality is, you know, many of us who are editors and publishers are also writers. And um, I don't know about everyone else, but I'll speak for myself and say my writing is always always better when someone else has given me some guidance <laughs> I'm always it's humbling it can be frustrating um but uh I have found that my writing has always taken a step up when I'm able to get another pair of eyes on my work so um I know that that can be a, a challenge sometimes for writers who are working with publications for the first time to be like my my precious words you you think I need to change them um so it's always interesting to hear how different editors work with writers, um, either more hands-on or less hands-on. And I think part of what I love about Medium is that there are so many publications that writers have the opportunity to find ed editors that that work with them in a style that feels good. And if one editor it feels too heavy-handed for a writer, they can then pursue working with a different editor at a different publication. So. Um, I really appreciate that. I'd love to just see um, who does anyone feel like they are their publication is relatively hands off with writers. Just or is everyone pretty hands on Eric it, it looks like you're pretty hands on yeah, We're hands on hands on um, Gabby what about you do you feel like you're pretty hands on with your writers. Well, I feel like if if I spend a lot of time with a new writer at the beginning, that's gonna save me a lot of time in the long term. Because if they are a new writer, they are not sure how the publication works. And with their first stories, I try to spend more time, hey, look at this, maybe do that. 
And then as time goes by, I don't need to do that that much. So I, I know some editors who don't like to invest time on new writers, but I think it's worth it because, well, they have something to say and they need support to learn how Medium works. So I, I try to, especially at the beginning of our writing relationship, to spend more time and give feedback to them. Yeah. 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 And Sean, are you hands on, hands off? What's your style? Pretty hands on. Um, but it really just depends on what the writer is uh, kind of craving for. Yeah. Uh, I like to make suggestions and not kind of um, portray it as like, this is what you have to follow. It's just the suggestion. Um, but it is nice when I can get more into the weeds uh, with different writers because I feel like we co-create a really beautiful story and we're both just kind of um, learning from each other. Yeah. Yeah. I guess one related question is um, how do you deal with writers who don't want feedback? How do you, how do you navigate that, um, that challenge? Uh, Eric, let's start with you. How do you deal with folks who are like, <laughs> I this? I, you know, like leave my writing alone. Um, I probably wouldn't publish them, honestly, because I think publishing, it's a collaborative process. Um, I understand I'm as precious with my words as everyone else, but um, I think you have to understand if you're submitting to a publication that you're you're giving your story to them to potentially improve if it can be improved and to publish. And it's, uh, it's a two-way street, really. So I think if someone was vehemently opposed to hearing any feedback I probably wouldn't have added them to the publication in the first place, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kiki, what about you? Do you have experience dealing with folks who push back and how do, how do you handle that? Oh, sure. It all depends on the pushing back portion of that. If they, we like to make suggestions. Um, sometimes the suggestions are very strong. <laughs> Sometimes they're just, you know, it's feedback. And I've had writers push back um, in not a nice way and, 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 you know, kind of get combative with editors. And if that happens, then yeah, we won't publish. If they have a reason for their pushback and, you know, they are the creator. If they have a reason, then we'll take it into consideration. Yeah. And and go ahead and and publish if it makes sense. So I, I do try to listen to our writers and work with them as best we can and, and avoid any confrontational type of pushback. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I mean this taps into kind of an interesting question of like uh being an editor is a very different skill than being a writer. Um it, which leads me to wonder just why do we do this you know why are why are we running publications <laughs> right what's your motivation um i know that many uh successful publication editors on medium use their publication as a way to demonstrate uh their expertise in their field um but I'd love to know for each of you, um, what's just in like one line, like what's your big motivation to run a publication on Medium? Um, Gabby, let's start with you. Yeah, well, my publication started because my son is autistic and I'm autistic. And I felt there was a need to get these kind of stories out there. And especially because uh, there's the people look at, at a story about autism and say, wait, I, I'm not autistic. I don't know anybody who is autistic as far as they know. So I don't care. This has nothing to do with me. What we're trying to do is, well, yeah, there are, you are actually interacting with autistic people every day. Yep. You should know more about this. And I could have kept the publication just for myself, and I did that for like a year. The publication started in 2019, and it took like a year for me to open up for other people. And this is where I should add that I'm—I was a teacher for 20 years, 
So I, I'm a, and I have said this in other spaces, I'm a professional feedback provider. Yeah. And I wanted to include other voices and help them find a way to discuss this topic and to make it relevant to other people. So yeah. that's the why of the publication. Yeah. 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 I really appreciate that for some of us, we start publications on Medium as a way to share our expertise for others of us. And in fact, Tony um, has talked about this. He started publications on Medium as a way to learn about a subject. Right. And that sounds like, Gabby, kind of what you're saying, like, here's a topic I'm really exploring and wanting to um, have more folks exploring with and starting a publication yes. can be a really wonderful way of um, building knowledge and building community that that's a really big part. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I would love to know kind of some of the I'm going to switch topics, some of the um, like, like the, the question here of like, why medium, like there are a lot of platforms that we can run publications on. Um, so why why choose Medium as a place to do um, your publishing? Eric, would you like to answer this one for us? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, as far as publishing on Medium, um, like the writing experience, the, the suite of tools, it's top notch, it's a pleasant uh, experience, it's really low friction. Um, but the big thing that keeps me coming back, honestly, is the the other writers, the sense of community. Um, kind of going back to your last question, my why was I created Fanfare because I wanted to find people who nerded out over movies and stuff like I do. Yeah. And that happened. Like, I, And I made a bunch of like lifelong friends through the publication. Um, so for me, it's, it's almost like community first and then some of the writing stuff second. Uh, and that's why I keep coming back. Yeah, I really, um, as someone who ran publications off of Medium for many years and sometimes felt like I was shouting into the void, um, it's it's really the thing that's remarkable about publications on Medium is, you know, this built-in sense of community that you can build um, using the, the writers who are here, the readers who are here. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Um, Sean, I'd love to understand a little bit from you about uh, what your why was with starting your publication. Yeah, for sure. Um, we actually talked about this backstage a little bit. And I have a similar why to Eric and Kiki of being on the platform and not really seeing the publication that I was looking to participate in. Um, I, I noticed a, a similar trend uh, from myself and other writers of kind of pointing to issues that we were seeing in our day-to-day -day lives, but I didn't see a space that was really focused on proposing solutions that were actionable and uh, accessible. Um, so yeah, I just uh, wanted to create that space and uh, it's been really, really cool to see the impact that it's been having, the community that's been able to uh, flourish from it and I'm uh, very grateful. That medium has so many niche communities. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. It's one of the things. Um, I know that one of the challenges some writers have with the Boost nomination pilot. There's currently 120 publications, of which some are right here in the room with us, that are in the program, and it's growing by about 10% every month. But there's this sense of like, but wait, there's not a publication catered to the topic that I want to write about, and to which I say. What's so great about Medium is you can start a publication. You can be the change you want to see. Now, keeping in mind that editing is a very different skill set than writing, but but anytime I hear from a writer who says, you know, I want to write for a, a, a Boost nomination pilot pub, but there aren't any publications catered to my niche, I'm like, honey, start that publication. You are the you are the niche we're looking for. Um and then anyone who's, so anyone on Medium can start a publication and anyone who's started a publication that's that's accepting submissions can get on the Boost Nomination Pilot wait list. I mean, that's where all of you came from. Um, and yes, it is a large list and yes, the program is growing slowly, but this is part of how Medium empowers writers and editors is anyone can start a pub. 
So, um, okay, I have a few quick questions. We only have a few minutes left. So I'm gonna ask, ask each of you one of these little questions. Um, let's start with Kiki. Um, what one piece of advice would you give to a new writer on Medium? On Medium specifically, I would find, yes. say find your tribe. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that means going to social media, to Twitter, to Instagram. Once you find like your little group of, of writers that you like to comment on and you, you know, sort of create this camaraderie, Medium explodes into that community word that we keep hearing. It's just, it, that is what makes Medium so special is the that. community. Yeah. Um, so find your community. Yeah. Find find your people. That's great. And um, Sean, what advice would you give to a new publication editor on Medium? I would give the advice of um, being very open, mm -hmm. uh, being open to exploring new paths, uh, whether that's uh, new styles of editing, new styles of uh, writers, um, just not limiting yourself to um any one particular path that you you may initially have like create the publication um in alignment with but yeah have keeping an open mind i feel like nice. that's been really nice. uh, helpful for myself yeah um and i have two questions that i want to try and squeeze in super fast gabby what advice would you give to a veteran writer who's been on medium mm -hmm. do you have any advice you would give to someone who's been on medium for a while but is trying to use it in a new way uh it will be to give an opportunity to new public new publications new editors and uh, there is something called the curse the curse of no knowing which basically means that because you have been doing something for a long time you assume everybody should know this it's obvious but it might not be so you have to be open also to learn new stuff for from other people and not, and not assume that no one has anything new to teach you that that's not the case yeah there's that's... always something else you can learn from other people that's such great advice and spoken like a teacher, I can tell. Exactly. <laughs> totally. exactly. Um, and Eric, I would love to know what advice would you give? Um, we just have like a minute left. What advice would you give to a veteran publication editor who's been on, who's been publishing like you on Medium for years? Yeah. Um, I guess I'd say um, it's pursue quality over quantity yeah. and always think about um raising the bar like what worked for your publication last year probably shouldn't work for your publication this year um and if like me you ran your publication by yourself for four years i'd think about getting some good editors to help you because it, it does make all the difference delegation delegation helps yep. um thank you guys so much i appreciate all of you so much thank you for taking the time thank you for all of you who joined us um we have speed networking coming up next so if you're going to attend that Go back to the lobby first, and then you can select your session from there. Um, if you're not joining us for speed networking, you can head to the expo hall for open office hours and chatting. And just thank you all for coming so much. And um, if you ever have questions for me, you can find my posts on the Medium blog, and I respond to every single response on my blog posts. So I'll see you all on the internet. Panelists, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.